Last time on Dragon Ball Z, the Cell games have finally begun, with Earth's greatest warriors as well as the Z fighters all making their way to the arena to test their might against Earth's would-be annihilator. The gauntlet was thrown, taunts were made, and patience was tested, as the mighty Hercule Satan shucked and jived his way around the arena, turning the battle for Earth's future into a photo op, confident that a mere bug man and some backwater karate hobos were no match for the reigning martial arts champ. Growing steadily more impatient with each taunt, Perfect Green made short work of the champ's disciples, and in no time the stage was set for the champ to try his hand at the Cell Games. While the Z Fighters either stared at the man in confusion or intensely wished for him to have the worst deaths possible, back in Earth cities the hopes and prayers of the people rest upon Satan's mighty afro. And much like the devil itself, Satan's promises were not to be relied upon as he was swatted away like a measly summer ramp by Perfect Cell, whose patience had now been tested to its utter limits and had his eyes set upon Earth's undercover golden boy, none other than Son Goku. Agreeing that it was time to end the foreplay, with a brief stretch and a smile, Kakarot stepped up to the plate ready to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the most dangerous adversary the Earth had ever known. The arena grows quiet, as the Z Fighters observe Goku stepping into the ring, with even Vegeta knowing that what he's about to watch right now isn't arguably the boxing match of the century. Well, all were quiet except Mr. Satan, whom after walking off his concussion, strolled up to the media section to cut a quick promo, assuring the people that the fly swatting he just received that sent him into the stratosphere was just a slip and fall fluke related to the density of his massive pegs and balls, creating a vacuum that when combined with the napalm cell was hiding under his shirt, it left no choice but for the champ to go flying. Satan assured the people that as soon as he was done folding his dog's girlfriend's laundry and picked up his allergy meds, shout outs to avoiding the puddle, he would be back to the ring to fold sell like a pretzel and eat his ass as promised previously. Vegeta observed Satan from the sidelines in absolute shock. He was objectively sure that he was in fact the prince of all cap, but clearly the earth had a warrior even more adept than he at the art of delusion, and all the prince could do was marvel. Real quick homies, I want to give a shout out to the sponsor of today's vid, Royal Match. The homies at Royal Match hit me up because they know after a long day of fighting galactic evil, sometimes a Z homie needs nothing more than a sit back, unwind, hit a quick match three for the one time. The ancient lore textbooks state that the Jolly King Robert here was once the benevolent leader of a powerful empire, much in the same vein as the proudest of the Saiyan race. In Royal Match, your goal is to help King Robert restore his kingdom to his former glory, one match three puzzle at a time. Royal Match has single player modes for the lone wolves out there as well as team modes for Z homies that like to roam in packs. So whatever is most relaxing for you, the option is available. Big ups to Royal Match for the sponsorship and you can download Royal Match for free now with the link in my description. And now, let's get back into the action. Back in the ring though, the fight had begun, with Goku wasting no time going on the offensive. Once again, right here at the beginning of the fight, we get a bit of a break between the broadcast and the manga version. In the manga, Goku and Perfect Cell's warm up ends pretty quickly, with the two briefly bumping uglies and exchanging blows before acknowledging that they were both just teasing each other before and it was time to hit third base. In the anime though, these fellas really take their time setting the mood, playing footsies, holding hands, these fellas are really out here whining and dining each other before the main course. Outside of the obvious enjoyment of the hands being thrown, my favorite part in the anime version of things is the side commentary from the rest of the cast. This man Vegeta is watching the whole thing and just cannot keep himself from hating and self glazing at the same time. Bro is watching Kakarot sell knock boots and the whole time he's thinking, oh yeah, you think he's fast? Wait till you guys see me cook while smirking to himself about what a cool guy he is. Then you got this man Satan who is absolutely convinced that these fellas got the whole ring rigged up and he's watching the highest production value WWE match ever. Bro swears Vince McMahon is going to jump out of the wasteland at any moment and Cell's going to take off his mask and reveal it as John Cena underneath and the whole thing is a work. Buddy's refusal to give this ragtag group a pugilist with no clout any type of credit is hating on a level that's rarely seen and I gotta give the man some credit for the commitment. Goku and Cell's pregame session ends with Cell giving Big Man the double axe handle from the top rope and upon landing, Goku blows Perfect Green a kiss. Acknowledging his strength, surround so 2 where he intends to truly lay all of his cards out on the table and the fight can truly begin. Standing across from one another, Goku decides that he'll be the one to play his hand first, outstretching his hands forward and then in the next second bursting forth with power as his aura expands and the onlookers are nearly blown away at the grand display of strength. 
Well, I say the second, but in reality, the anime really extends this moment quite a bit, with Goku's key charging seeming as though it's causing a shift in the tectonic plates, while Goku starts doing katas mid-power up, outstretching his hands and praising the sun, declaring an oath to the gods of bus ass and Kotal Khan to give him strength to bathe in his enemy's blood and remove their spines from the resting position. Majority of the Z homies look on in terror at the Saiyan's blast from this display of strength, gassing up their homie Kakarot from outside of the club, geeked at how powerful he is and the fact that their bingo cards may not be getting stamped today after all. A quick side note though, something that bugs me so bad in this moment is the cutaway to Tien and Yamcha. What in Big Green's Earth is going on with Yamcha's hair in this shot, y'all? Buddy went to his barber and said, yo, give me the Bart Simpson. Buddy out here looking like he's doing a Paul Phoenix cosplay. This gotta be the same dude that rendered that cursed thumb point Vegeta. And speaking of the Prince of Poor Renders, Vegeta just stares at the big homie Kakarot in shock. Thinking back at the merciless roast he received from the low class bum on the top of the lookout about the differences in their power and damn near in tears now at the realization that dude was absolutely right. Poor Vegeta man, always a bridesmaid, never the bride. But what's most interesting though for sure is young bull Gohan's reaction. Gohan sees his dad power up and is like, okay pops, I see you, but when he looks around and sees everybody else speechless, he's kind of lost. Cause while it's true that his dad's getting ready to cook right now, the amount of glazing that's occurring now in response to the key charge just felt a little bit too much. Looking back, I really gotta give Toriyama the nod for how well he handled Gohan being the one true Sigma male in the room while everyone else was out here meat riding his pops. As a kid, I really don't think I picked up on a lot of the hints he dropped as to Gohan being that guy. But coming back to the series after all these years and seeing what both the manga and anime have to offer, it's sick seeing the little breadcrumbs he left for the attentive reader to know that Gohan might be the true Transformer and that there's more to this kid than meets the eye. After letting Kakarot get his rocks off, Cell peeps and is like, don't mind if I do, and begins gathering his energy as well. Then in a short moment, begins to burst with power. Then we get one of the coldest moments in Z, where a fully powered up Goku with zero fear and all his manly glory walks up to the alpha dog that has perfect cell as the two take a moment to soak in the stare down of the century. This right here is up there with Hogan and Andre the Giant and low tier guy versus the scant as the top stare downs of hood history. Absolutely undebatable. And what happens next is even more iconic, because after the walk up and cell gets off his mandatory villainous <laughs> Subarashi and tells Goku all right homie you're up and goku's like don't mind if i do and proceeds to hit this man with a four piece of the century no kfc he hits the man's cell with a gut shot that sounds like a hand grenade just went off then follows it up with a donkey punch to the back of the head on some kinky stuff followed by a kick straight to the dome piece with a full leg extension then a hook for good measure that would have made joe frazier blush that sends the perfect green man flying into a different area code that last hit had this man green bouncing off the cell game Games arena floor like a 25 cent bouncy ball from your local Walmart. And then just when it looks like Big Fella might be headed towards a ring out, he stops himself upside down in midair and just smiles at the man Goku like, thank you. This is the type of ass beating I've been looking for. Finally, somebody showed up in this place ready to work. Now anybody else who just got compliments from the chef for the cheek spreading they just delivered, like what Goku just did to sell right here, will be taken back a little bit. But y'all already know this man Goku ain't been right in the head for a minute. And he just smiles back, assuring his soulmate that he's up for another round whenever he makes a call. These two just need to get a room already, bro. The anime team treats us to a nice little exhibition after this part. With Cell going full Soul Calibur Edge Master mode and swiping the techniques from the Z Fighters present to flirt a little more with his brand new plaything. First, he busts out the multi-form technique and half the humans on the sidelines start breaking out in hives as intrusive thoughts about a ball saying with a handlebar mustache putting them in a blender start to come to mind. Then, for a little razzle-dazzle, Cell starts using a big green classic, putting two fingers on the temple and firing off a nail gun, all pun intended to keep Kakarot on his toes. Then for the entree, this fella perfect green decides he's gonna move for a Kienzan and starts hurling home and destructo disc at Goku to see if he can make him just a little nostalgic for all the fun times back on Namek. Goku decides he wants to see if Cell did his homework and starts flying towards Cell to give him an audition for the new season of Two and a Half Men. All Cell does is smile though, because his freezer DNA refuses to catch a repeat of that film and he leads the disc back to Kakarot, seemingly slicing him in two, until it's revealed that these are just after images and Goku has been playing games just as much as Cell. 
Right here is where the anime and manga start to line back up. With Cell deciding that the B-list moves of the supporting cast don't seem to be doing the trick, so now it might be the time to see how Son Goku handles a taste of his own medicine in a real hood classic. Preparing a Turtle Hermit classic, the Kamehameha Wave aimed right at Goku at point blank range. When Goku recognizes what's happening, he's immediately shook, warning his brother from another mother that if he shoots a hot one that powerful that close to Earth, it's not just him that's going to be wiped out, this whole planet's going to get put in the pack. I don't think it would be possible for Cell to be less concerned with the consequences of the attack. It's Goku's problem now, as Buddy takes aim and fires at the Earth's savior, wondering how the resident karate bum will worm his way out of this one. Real quick though, can we give this man props on his Kamehameha wave form though? Just look at this man bro, knees bent and just a little over shoulder width apart, right arm extended perfectly straight with the left slightly curved to absorb recoil and shock. I know Roshi's posted up in the trap looking at his 12 inch paws. Right Right now with a little tear in his eye at how textbook that was. Goku was a little less impressed though, because in .2 seconds he had a whole nuke aimed at his dome piece, and his next decision would quite literally decide the fate of the planet. Putting every ounce of faith he had in his King Kai Air Max 13s, Kakara hops in the air to divert the blast so Earth wouldn't end up looking like Namek 2. Now that everyone else was safe, there was just one last problem. Now he had to figure out how he would avoid getting no Maiwamo Shinderu by the railgun coming straight for his forehead. Moments before getting erased, Goku remembers that Toriyama gave him the greatest handy of all, putting his two fingers to his temple and Shukan Edowing out of harm's way and right behind Cell. Giving him the craziest fresh cut of all time with his boot, resulting in Cell flipping to regain his balance and wondering just how in the world this monkey's uncle managed to pull that one off. Cell openly brings up his frustration with the Kakarot jump scares, and Goku spills the beans on how he learned to teleport when he was getting sturdy in Area 51. Now Goku has a question of his own, asking Perfect Green if he was willing to pop the planet's top right there with that Kamehameha. Cell smiles, telling him that Goku's the main character, and he was pretty sure he was going to find some way out of it. But real talk, the fate of this planet amounts to less than a pile of beans to him. His only concern right now is finding someone who can rustle his jimmies enough to give his new transformation a workout, and he's gotta say Kakarot's fitting the bill for the moment. Cell figures that's enough glazing for a few minutes though and decides that it's time for some offense. Hitting Goku with a flurry of attacks, seemingly teleporting all around him with how fast he is, reminding Goku that he's something of a speedster himself, and with this proclamation, these fellas start going at it. Somebody gotta check the TV animation team for peds, because no lie, the anime version of this scrap really might have the manga beat. At this point, the kid gloves are off and these two are teleporting across the Cell Games arena like it was a doll scene mirror match. Then this man Cell catches Kakarot slipping and bodies him with a left hook that was so gnarly, the artist wouldn't even let us see his face during the hit. But Cell was like, hold my beer real quick, I'm not finished, and starts doing some absolutely nasty work, using Kakarot's head like a speed bag while throwing the fastest right hands the ring has ever seen this side of Manny Pacquiao. Goku decides, alright Brody, enough is enough, and while Cell is trying to end his career permanently, he launches him in the air of both legs like this is Marvel 3 and the two start going at it again, leaving after image after after image looking like an online match in Ultimate Ninja Storm, until finally Cell moves just a bit too slow and catches a knee directly to the bread basket. And when I tell you this knee was life altering, I swear it's a wonder this man kept his lunch. That one almost turned this man back to form 1, almost had him grow his whole beak back and turn into a nation of Islam Cell. Cell didn't appreciate that though and hooks this man Goku so hard, Chi Chi had to double check he was still on her diddle plan. The two then collide in a crazy elbow clash that I know had their funny bones acting different. Then when they separated, this man Goku somehow turned into Ryu from Street Fighter and hit that quarter circle back kick, smashing Cell straight in the dome piece. I promise if you listen real hard you can hear Tatsumaki said boo killing in the background off screen. Cell got kicked so hard he turned into four different people and double axe handed Kakarot straight into the dirt. Then once they hit the ring again, these two decided it was time for some acrobatics. So after they got their little flippy flips off, they meet in the middle of the ring, trade blows, and start spinning out and away from each other on their big green and Android 17 timing. Ain't no way you can't tell me this wasn't the same animator on this fight. That's gotta be bro's signature or something, and I'm not even mad at it because it gets me crazy hype every time. After the fight continues into the air, Cell stops for a minute to let Goku know just how bricked up this fight has him, and in order to not kill the vibe, he wants to make a little change. As Cell outstretches his hand, Goku finally realizes what type of time he's on and tells everyone down below to take cover. In a matter of seconds, the entire place is up in smoke, bricks flying everywhere. Cell damn near put the whole audience on a t-shirt in order to make sure Cell games didn't get cock blocked by something as goofy as a ring out. 
Satan and the rest of the circus clowns were only saved due to the benevolence of Hasselhoff, who recommended that they enact their escape protocols immediately, because the only thing they were doing out here is making a bigger mess for EMS to come out clean later. Goku and Perfect Green's brawl continues, with the two getting into a dogfight ace combat style until Goku decides that he's had enough of the games and is going to pull out one last trump card. Goku shoots into the air and places his hands into a familiar position as he slowly begins to chant for his finishing move. Perfect Green observes him from below and lets out a huge belly laugh, telling Goku that he might as well stop the cap right now because they both know that firing off a command mayor from up there at that angle will body bag the whole planet and he ain't on that type of time. As Cell continues watching though, a bead of sweat starts to pour over his brow because this man Kakarot is still going, and something about that look in his eye has him feeling like this lunatic really might just go through with it. Oh my god. Now the rest of the Z fighters begin looking on as well, with Krill being like, okay buddy, you can quit the bluff now. We all know you can't use that move from up there. And as his friends work their way through the stages of grief, Goku continues, eyes still locked on Cell, arms still cocked and loaded and ready to shoot up the whole block. As Goku's key leaps higher and higher and the beam in his palms goes brighter and brighter, even Vegeta is like, yo, ain't that about a bitch? This clown's really about to do it. And right before the Earth's special forces were prepared to come to grips with the team kill, Goku vanishes and suddenly reappears right in front of Perfect Green's grill. Moments before impact, the attentive listener could hear a blood curling, holy shit, before the deafening sound of a fully powered warp Kamehameha drowned out the soundscape and left the arena in utter silence. After the dust had settled, all that could be seen was Goku, still stanced up, standing in front of what is, or rather was, perfect green, missing a number of vital appendages and resembling a Ken doll that just got back from Sid's house. And right here, homies, is where we'll call it. See homies, I forgot just how good of a box and match Perfect Green vs Goku is. This rewatch reminded me just what a talented team of animators the show had working on it back in the day and goes to show that cause the show might be older doesn't mean it's any less quality. Tune in next time y'all as we celebrate Son Goku's triumph over evil. Was Goku's brilliant gambit enough to ensure the safety of the earth or is true evil a bit harder to put down than even our heroes may have realized? Be easy y'all and I'll talk to you again in the next video.